enjoying the student productions of your school. Tonight's event and every event produced by your school during the school year are created, filmed, and produced by the students you love to follow and support. Become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor. It's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community. As a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day.
enjoying the student productions of your school. Tonight's event and every event produced by your school during the school year are created, filmed, and produced by the students you love to follow and support. Become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor. It's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community. As a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. Good evening everyone, welcome to uh, Dakota Style Field here in beautiful Clark, South Dakota. Finally about ready to get underway with our championship game of the Class B State Junior Legion Baseball Tournament. Game was supposed to probably start around 3.30 or so, had a shot of rain that lasted till 4.30ish. They got the field ready and rained again immediately afterwards. So they got the field ready again, and we are ready to play. Quick shout-out, thank you to the grounds crew for the phenomenal work on this field. There were puddles of water by second base, a lake by third, and a nice swimming pool over by first. So that's cleaned up nicely, and we are ready to play ball. Umpires are checking out the mound here. Mound might be still a little wet. Probably got a screwdriver out there or something, cleaning off shoes. Making a check over. Give me a little bit of time to run through uh, lineups here. So we have Groton being the home team and up to bat. Lake Norton Badger is the, uh, or excuse me, Groton is the visitor. Lake Norton Badger is the home team. So I'll set the defense here for Lake Norton Badger. We have, looks like, up on the mound we got Tyson Stevenson, 
Behind the plate is going to be Christian Rodriguez. Down at first base is George Jensen. At second base is Rylan Thuey. At third base is, looks like Carson Stormo. At shortstop is Dawson Nome. Up and left is Jackson Wadsworth. In center field is Turner Stevenson. And in right field is going to be, looks like Riker Warrington. First three batters here for Groton. Leading off going to be Taylor Deagle, followed by Ryan, Ryan, or excuse me, Ryan Greblinghoff. And the third batter will be Braden Altoff. For a lot of people that are watching this without a horse in the race, Lake Norton probably favored on paper a little bit more than Groton, but obviously Groton no slouch playing baseball. They are here in this game. So Deagle going to lead it off. First pitch going to be down in the dirt. Ball one. No, there was a little conversation with this game on the field conditions and the rain that came in. The Groton coach said for sure we are playing this game tonight. Doesn't matter if it starts at 6.30, 7.30, or 9.30. We are playing. I'm sure a lot of these guys have football practice starting tomorrow morning. 2-0 going to break on that outside corner. Should say a fastball on the outside corner. That's what it was. Two one for Deagle on the way. Will be swung at, grounded to the third baseman. Waits for it. Throw is not in time. Throw across the diamond was a little bit off target. Was caught by the first baseman, but gave Deagle just enough time to cross first base and is in safe. Ryan Greblinghoff up. Greblinghoff going to not take his first pitch. Had to make a pickoff attempt at the runner at first. Gribbling off, waiting for his first pitch. On the way. Down low, ball one. Second pitch on the way. Down low again, ball two. Two zero throw down is going to be a little bit off target. Gets into center field. Good backup by the center fielder, Turner Stevenson. Grebling off. The 2 1. Runner down on second. Will be low and out. Ball three. Three one on the way. Going to stay up. Might have the runner caught. And throw not going to be handled correctly there. 
will get away. Runner is able to advance over to third. So Groton here in the top of the first. Only threw one batter. Full count for Greblinghoff. And a runner over at third. Payoff he is going to be outside. Greblinghoff going to draw the base on balls. Braden Altoff to the plate. Runners sit on the corners. Greblinghoff probably going to steal this. Gets a look over. Pitch on the way. Going to be a shot right up the middle. We'll score one. And Groton going to draw first blood on the hit up the middle. RBI single by Braden Altoff. Colby Dunker to the plate. Runners on first and second with no outs. Pitch on the way to Dunker, going to send it out of play. Dunker showing bunt, will pull it back. Pitch will be across the plate, called strike two. O2, gonna be a shot right to the shortstop. Flip and throw to first, going to get away. Will be a 6-4 fielder's choice. Throw over to first will be an error. Will allow one run to come in. I would definitely say there, Dunker did the job he needed to. Grounded into a fielder's choice. Will be on first for him, but that error does drive in the run. Groton here in the top of the first scored two so far. Logan Ringenberg to the plate. Waiting for first pitch on the way. Going to be a nice break for strike one. Second pitch. Going to be stay up high. One one swing and a miss for strike two. One two Ringenberg gonna send it to the right fielder, gonna catch it right on the foul line. Will be out number. That will be out number two, actually. So that was out number two. Runner down on first. This is Caleb Hoover at the dish. First pitch will stay upstairs. One, no, stays low and out. Two, oh, down low, ball three.
Rio is on the way. Strike right at the knees. Three one for Hoover on the way. Nice little breaking ball. We'll run it full with two outs and a runner down on first. Payoff pitch, swing up high, going to be pulled to right field. Right field, they're kind of, I think, lost that one in the sun a little bit. There'll be an error on the right fielder. Throw back home is not in time. Hoover going to reach on the air by the right fielder. And then the runner will come in and score. So there was, looks like an error out in right field and an error on the throw back in that allows that to be completed. Lake Norton Badger here, not doing so hot in the top of the first defensively. Four errors up on the board. Fouled off strike one. Batter here looks like Braxton Embry. Hoover sits on second base in scoring position. O one one on the way. Going to stay up at eye level. One one breaking ball gonna stay a little bit up high. Two one swing and a miss from Emery. Going to put Deuces Wild on the board with a runner at second. Two two on the way. Gonna be outside in a wild pitch. Runner will advance over to third. And that will run the count full with two outs and a runner 90 feet away. Groton already had a good top of the first. I'm sure would like to continue the damage. Never can have a lead big enough in a championship game. Full count payoff pitch is on the way. Going to be a reaching swing. And that will be Braxton Emery will go down swinging. Groton in the top of the first. Going to score three runs on one hit. And the big one, four errors from Lake Norton Badger. Groton will leave a one man on. Lake Norton Badger got a lot of work to do in the bottom of the first. We'll be back in a minute with... Lake Norton Badgers first stab at.
Welcome back to Dakota Style Field here in beautiful Clark, South Dakota. Got Brock Greenfield on the mic with me. Why not do a co-call in the championship game? Isn't that right? Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I apologize. Um, I ran home to throw in some laundry. I've got to go to Mitchell tonight yet, and so I thought I'd get ahead of things before uh, before this game got started. They said they were going to start at 7.30. I already started at 7.25, so... For Groton, Ryan Grebelinghoff is on the mound. Brevin Fleece behind the plate. Braden Althoff at first. Braxton Emery at second. Dylan Ablins at short. Caleb Hoover at third. Colby Dunker out in left. Taylor Deagle in center. And Logan Ringenberg is in right. Leading off for Lake Norton in the bottom of the first inning. Dawson Nome, he's the shortstop. Nome waiting for his first pitch here. First pitch is on the way, going to stay up at eye level, ball one. One thing I noticed with Griblinghoff up on the mound yesterday, does love to do that pump a lot. I mean, three or four times per pitch? I think three or four is minimum. I saw him in the American Legion tournament a few weeks ago in the regional tournament. Tap four, five, six, and seven times a lot. Second pitch to Nome was a ball. 2-0 the count. 2-0, a swing through and going to be a miss from Nome. We'll draw that count at a 2-1. That was a big swing. His helmet literally almost fell off. Right. 2-1. Pitch is on the way. Going to be a fast ball and slammed foul down the left field line. Two two. Pitch is on the way, going to just be off that outside corner. Not a bad pitch. Nome has been swinging big. See if he can get that cheap strike out. We'll have to earn it here. Full count. Nome waiting for the payoff. Is on the way, and sends a grounder. Will take itself foul on the spin. Tyson Stevenson, the pitcher, waits on deck. Full count, payoff pitch, number two. No, I'm going to call time. Incidentally, Noam came into this uh, this evening batting two for eight. One RBI, one run scored. Payoff two is on the way and will stay just outside. No one gonna draw that base on balls. Pretty important that Lake Norton Badger gets a runner on here. When you got those four errors in the top of the first, the only way to make up for errors is with runs. Tyson Stevenson now the batter. He's one for four on the tournament. The Stevenson boys had to miss yesterday. As I believe I understand, their sister got married. What a day to get married. <laughs> First pitch, going to stay off the plate, out. When my brother and his fiance decided they were, when they decided they were going to get married, First thing they did is ask when the state baseball tournaments were over. We had it six days after. <laughs> That's how you tell baseball is important to a family. Called strike on the pitch, down by the knees. Bunt was shown and immediately pulled back. That one would have been a difficult bunt to, or diff difficult pitch to actually lay down, as it was low. A lot of times you see a guy drop the head of the bat and he ends up popping up. Mm-hmm. One-one on the way. Going to be in there. Runner is off on the pass ball. It was a called strike, so it's one and two. Now the count to Tyson Stevenson. George Jensen waits on deck. Oh 
So Dawson Nome now in scoring position out there at second base. Stevenson back in the box. Grebling off will come set, and here's the one two. One two, going to stay about at eye level, just above the letters, really, when he stands up. So 2-2 two, two count, no outs. Runner down at second. Five taps that time. Inside and low, I think they're four. Ball three, another full count. I wonder if he's signaling what pitch he's going to throw by the taps. Something I'm going to try and keep attention to here while running camera shots. Big swing and a miss from Stevenson. He'll go down swinging for out number one. So when Dawson Nome was up, I said that he literally almost came out of his helmet with one of those big swings, and Tyson Stevenson did. I, I don't think I've seen that at all this year, and now twice in two at-bats. George Jensen, now the batter, first baseman for Lake Norton. Checks in on the tournament so far, two for seven. High fly, going to be out of play, going to bounce off a curb. Better that than my vehicle. <laughs> a dangerous street to park on around this baseball field. Don't know if I would risk it. Oh, one pitch on the way. Jensen going to ground on to second base. Second baseman really mad at himself. Let's it slip right between his legs. And that error is going to bring in Nome. Braxton Emery did everything right. He went down to a knee. He was going to make sure that he didn't allow it to slip out into the out into the outfield, and it somehow managed to get through the five hole. Fundamentally sound. Yep, just just a missed time there. Stormo Carson Stormo to the plate. Jensen down at first. First pitch to Stormo. Going to be down low. Ball one. Stormo's wielded a pretty good bat. He's three for six coming into tonight with two singles, a double, two RBIs, and two runs scored in the tournament. He's also walked a couple times, so sporting a 500 on base percent with a... i got to take a look again. Kind of a half swing there okay. by Stormo. 625 on base percent. Yep. Stormo 1-1 one, one after the half swing effort. Not bad at all on those stats. He is the number four in the lineup, though. Always accept, Always expect your batter there to be good. Kind of a pass ball. Hit the catcher. Dropped right between his legs. Gets by him. Jensen at first had to look to his dugout. Kind of got yelled at to get going. Some of the fans were yelling too. No. One run. So a 2-1 count after that pass ball allows the runner to advance. He's at 18 pitches. Two one on the way. Swing and a miss going to even that count up. There is action down in the goat and bullpen right now. Gonna have short leashes here tonight. As long as you got pitchers, you might as well have them ready to go. Absolutely. Two two on the way to Stormo. Going to swing and a miss. Swing. First base is open. He's gonna hustle down the throw. Not gonna. There's not gonna be a throw for that matter. That's that's a mental error there. I say I understand you want to try and stop that guy advancing to third, but you have to make that throw to first. You have to get that out. Thing was, um, Jensen was hustling and he was gonna he was gonna be there anyway. So you might as well try to get the out, and he would have had ample time to do so. 
I'm not sure if Greblinghoff stepped wrong or what, but he's down. And we're going to step away for 30 seconds and give him time to regroup. So when everybody gathered around, I thought he was hurt, but it just turns out he was trying to get the clay out of his spikes. Christian Rodriguez now the batter. Rodriguez, the five in the lineup. Going to be first pitch down low, ball one. Runners sit on the corners, 190 feet away. Rodriguez, two for seven coming into tonight, one... Single, one double slash home run. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Three RBIs and two runs scored. Also, a base on balls. He takes a big hack at that one. The Throw. Groton team tried to run the cut play. I heard Brad Dome say go when he saw the pitch up. Good thing Jensen didn't because they would have been able to feel it and fire it back. Go ahead. Sorry. You're good. You kind of, kind of, my train of thought just went off the tracks and is in a lake somewhere so <laughs> one and one the count here with one down runners on second and third one one swing and a huge fly ball out to center left probably going to be deep enough let's see here's the throw coming in Jensen is going to slide in safely the throw just a hair up the line Carson Stormo chose not to try to move up on the throw so Credit Rodriguez with an RBI on the sack fly. Jackson Wadsworth now going to be up to the dish. Wadsworth playing left field tonight. He comes into tonight's play two for seven with a couple singles. A run scored. And, boy, I'm not sure what CL is. Oh, CI. He, he's got the one catcher's interference in the tournament. Hit the catcher's mitt. Wadsworth waiting for his first pitch. It is on the way. Going to defensively swing and foul it out of play. He got around on it, that's for sure. Scattering down there under the tent were the commissioners and some of the, I think it's some local Clark players. Not 100% sure. Yeah, it is. Everybody seems to be all right. Here's the 0-1. Fired, swing through, and a miss for strike two. We'll put Wadsworth down in the count quickly, 0-2 with two outs. Runner down on second. O2 pitch on the way and a swing and a miss from Wadsworth will go down swinging for out number three. Lake Norton chips away a little bit. They scored two runs on no hits. There was one error and one man left on base. We'll head into the top of the second inning with Groton leading Lake Norton 3-2 and we'll be back in one minute. Welcome back 
Sioux Dakota style field here at Dickinson Park in Clark, South Dakota. Championship action going into the top of the second. Groton currently in the lead 3 2 2. So the line scores in the first inning. Three runs for Groton on one hit. In the bottom half, they did commit one error. On the flip side, Lake Norton, two runs, no hits. And in the top of the first, they committed the four errors. So there's one hit on the board, but five errors and five runs. Leading off for Groton is going to be Dylan Ablin, the shortstop. I think both of these teams a little... A little off from the rain delay. Expected this game to start four hours earlier, and they were ready for it. Sitting around a baseball field for four hours will kind of get you cold. First pitch was down low as a ball. Ablin went the complete game in the first round. Down low for ball two on that pitch. Put it at an 0-2 for Ablin. 2-0. Oh, thank you. That will be strike one. The rain delay has even affected me. <laughs> I'm taking a look here. So far, it looks as though Dable, as they call him, is 0-2 in the tournament. With a run scored, a base on balls. Pitch up high. We'll run it to 3-1. They had design they had a designated hitter in the lineup for him on Friday night. That's why the low number of reps at the plate. Here's the pitch. Ball four going to get away from Christian Rodriguez. Dable hustling down to first base, but Rodriguez gets to the fence and grabs the ball, preventing him from moving up. Brevin Fleece now the batter. He's the catcher for Groton. Brevin on the tournament. Two for five. Two singles. Four RBIs. Three runs scored. A couple of walks. So he's been on base a fair amount and he's been productive at the dish. First pitch going to be down low. Ball one. That is very good stats for a nine hitter. Especially when you're going to roll over to top of your lineup. Stevenson now up to 36 pitches, 18 strikes. Still working on finding his rhythm. Here's the pitch, and that's going to be low for ball two. Brad Dome, I'm going to step out, have a little conference on the mound, try to settle his righty down, and we're going to step away for 30 seconds. So Nome goes out there and gives his starting pitcher a little bit of a pep talk. Christian Rodriguez gives him a fist bump. And the count it remains 2-0 to Brevin Fleece. They will over there at first base with the pretty decent lead. 2-0 gonna stay on the inside. We'll run it as a 3-0 count. Rio stays inside, and that will be a police grabbing the base on balls, heading down to first. So runners are on first and second. We roll things over to the top of the order. Taylor Deagle, the center fielder, going to be the batter. He's 0 for 1 on the night. Comes into today's play at 2 for 5 on the tournament with two singles. Two RBIs, five runs scored. He's walked three times and been hit by a pitch. Deagle in his last appearance reached on that 5-3 throwing error and then did come around to score. Shows Bunt. Stabbed at it. P 
Teal down to first base, and it's confirmed that he did go. Oh, one Digo waiting for a second. Is on the way. Going to stay. Actually going to break over that outside corner. Deagle going to sit with the 0-2. Correction. Deagle has not been hit by a pitch. He must have sacrificed at some point. 0-2. Swing and a miss. Drop third strike. Throw down. It will oh, be they need to put the tag on him. Deagle, I'm sorry, but Deagle took off running, but he he couldn't advance. And so it's just going to be a strikeout. But if Jensen had recognized that he had to put this tag on, they would have had a double play in that situation. Kind of a confusing turn of events, though, with the runner hustling all the way down. You think, well, i got to stay on first base and just tag the base. No, he's out. One of those good things that hustling, even though it might play might already be dead gets you. Ablin stayed at second base. Better now is Ryan Greblinghoff. He is 0 for 0 on the night. Nice breaking ball going to drop in there for strike one. Walked in his first at bat. The beginning of play was 4 for 7 with 4 RBIs, 5 runs scored. He has been hit by a pitch and walked once. Nice pitch for strike two. I think the best thing I've seen from Stevenson up on the mound is that breaking ball. Just able, been able to place it. You can't stay with it all the time because it'll be figured out, but does get the strikes. Greblinghoff and Braden Althoff are as hot as anybody for the Groton team. Althoff waits on deck. He comes into tonight's play, and I'm going to say it kind of quietly so I don't tempt fate or, or jinx him. He's in the running for a batting title. There's a pitch lined out into right field, and that's going to get down. Riker Warrington is over. Mishandles it a little bit, then airmails it to the, into foul territory. Christian Rodriguez goes and grabs it. Thought about throwing to... Uh, second base but chose not to so it's going to be a base hit Ablin is going to score on that RBI and then Fleece moves up on the errant throw Braden Altoff coming to the plate with runners on second and third good scoring position First pitch, Altov going to be watched outside. Other side, Hudson. one no, -oh. going to be shot. Second baseman gets to it in time. Will be the RBI ground out for out number two. Definitely will take that. Sacrificing out for a run. Good thing every day of the week. Colby Dunker to the plate. First pitch to Dunker. Going to be on that inside-ish corner. Second pitch on the way, fouled off. We'll quickly go 0 2. O 2 count for Dunker. Runner 90 feet away with two outs. His first at bat, he grounded out there to Dawson Nome. Dawson flipped it to second. The runner moving to third, and then the return throw to first base got away from the second baseman, so it went for an error as the runners moved up. 
O2 to Dunker. Breaking going to be grounded to the shortstop and an error. Well, in keeping with the theme of today, when it rains, it pours. Things starting to snowball a little bit. Absolutely. That's, that's unfortunate there for Ryland Thuey, the second baseman. Should have just got a little bit lower on that grab. First pitch on the way, going to be down low. This is Ringenberg at the plate. One no stays at eye level. These are two fundamentally sound teams. Just having a little bit of trouble. Probably a little bit nervous here in the state championship game. And as you said, sitting around for four hours probably didn't help the cause. Good hold there by Ringenberg. Able to just hold that bad. Hold that back. He wanted every piece of that pitch, but something inside him says, hold and don't turn. Three O count. 3-0, going to be watched. Pretty much 3-0 is going to be a take all day long. Ringenberg is 2 for 5 coming into tonight. 0 for 1 so far, but he's got 3 RBIs and 3 runs scored. Also been hit by a pitch 3 times. Shoots that one foul and out of play. Count will be full for Ringenberg with two outs, runner on first for Groton. Payoff pitch is on the way. Runner is off and pitch going to stay off the plate. Ringenberg going to draw the base on balls. So far, Groton batters have reached base via the air four times. Hoover now, the batter, Caleb Hoover, the third baseman, 0 for 1 on the night. Lined out, lined to the right field that reached on the error in his previous at bat. He did hit the ball very hard. That ball skipped in there for ball number one. Nice stop by Rodriguez behind the plate. Caleb was 3 for 7 coming into tonight with an RBI and 3 runs scored. A lot of production up and down the lineup for Groton throughout the first two days. 1-0. Oh, nice pitch. Will swing and miss. Will go 1-1 one, one in the count. Hoover's 1-1 one, one pitch, going to break over the plate for strike two. Tyson Stevenson now set to throw his 30th pitch of the inning and his 60th pitch of the game. Shot up the middle, nasty hop. Throw to first is on time. Going to be a nice play from Thuey over to Jensen for Lake Norton Badger. And that will end the inning for Groton. I haven't disagreed with much of what Nathan said, but if I'm the second baseman and I see that, I'm saying that's a beautiful hop because it it uh, didn't it wasn't an in betweener. It was right to him, kind of a Sunday hop, but it was a big hop. It hit the rubber and skipped up in the air. With that, three runs, one hit, two errors, and two men left on base in the top of the second inning. We'll head into the bottom of the inning. Lake Norton Badger coming to bat, trailing 6-2 to Groton. We'll be back in a minute.
Welcome back to Dakota Style Field, bottom of the uh, second, about to get underway. Lake Norton Badger coming up to the plate. Turner Stevenson going to lead things off for Lake Norton Badger. Hasn't had an at bat tonight. He's two for four or two for three. Excuse me, two for three on the tournament. Has an RBI. Turner, again, he and his brother missed yesterday because of family obligations. Wedding bells were ringing. So Turner C Stevenson here, the uh, seven batter. Riker Warrington will be the on-deck batter. Ryland Thuey, the third batter of the inning. See if these guys can get things started for Lake Norton Badger. First, first pitch, just going to stay barely inside. Second pitch is on the way. That's going to be high and in. Duo down low for ball three. Turner Stevenson with the 3 0 count going to watch as it will be a little bit high, I think a little bit out there as well. So get a lead off walk and we'll bring up. Riker Warrington. Warrington, first step out of the evening. He's got an RBI in the tournament. Also pitched the first game for Lake Norton Badger. First pitch, going to be right down the middle. Called strike one. Warrington on the first day of the tournament went five and two thirds innings. Going to show bunt. Will lay one down. Looks like going to uh, bunt to uh, move the runner over to get him in scoring position. That's an excellent bunt, and he hustled down the line. Made it a little more difficult than it should have been. Grebling off, though. Picked it up and flipped it to Braden Althoff for out number one. Turner Stevenson at second base now as Ryland Thuey steps up. Ryland is playing second base for Lake Norton. Badger. Two for six on the tournament. Two runs scored. He's also walked a couple times. Pretty good production from the nine hitters in this game throughout the tournament so far. Gribbling off comes set. Dewey going to take that first pitch right down Broadway. Waiting for the second. And on the way, going to be inside. Thuey will duck to get out of the way. 1-1. One, one. One, one. Fired. Thuey going to shoot one right at third baseman. Bounces off of his glove. And throw's not going to be in time. By the time Hoover corralled that ball, his only real bet would have been to try to go to second base after it caromed off his glove. Turner Stevenson had strayed a little too far from the bag. But he did hustle back, and then Hoover fired across the infield a little bit tardy. So runners on first and second with 
One down as we go to the top of the order in Dawson Nome. Nome calls for time and gets it right before Greblinghoff broke his hands and started his motion. Greblinghoff probably a little irritated with that time. First pitch to Nome on the way. Swung on, lifted high. Left fielder gonna find and, and that ball gets down. Pretty good anticipation there by Turner Stevenson. At the last minute, last minute uh, thought he was thought that uh, Dunker was gonna get under it and make the play. Glanced off Dunker's glove though. He had to cover a lot of ground. He did, and that ball stayed up there for a long time. Tyson Stevenson now, he's the pitcher, steps up there with the bases loaded, number two batter in the order. He struck out swinging in his previous at bat. Only one out here in the bottom of the second. This would be a good chance to make up for some of those errors. And if I said Tucker, I apologize, it's Turner. Hits this one out to right field. There's gonna be a play at the plate and it's gonna skip past the catcher. Nice throw coming in from Logan Ringenberg. Going to give that one a sacrifice fly, though. Good attempt on the throw in, but for an outfielder, that's an absolute cannon throw to try and make that and put it on the dime. I haven't seen... I haven't seen that kind of throw make it in time for a while. Looks like Grubinghoff going to take a moment, get out the screwdriver, and clean out his cleats. So you were a, a short hop away from that being an inning-ending double play. Instead, Lake Norton... Scores a run. The runners move up on the error as it skipped past him to the fence. And George Jensen now, the batter. He's the three batter in the order. Two for seven coming into tonight. 0 for 1 so far this evening. Jensen, the three in the lineup. Runners on second and third. Will take his first pitch inside for a ball. There were, um, just want to mention this, at one point, at a couple different times, in between games during the rain, people were talking about, this isn't going to be playable. And some of us from Clark said, our field takes water pretty well. This ball lined up the middle, past uh, the pitcher, and it's going to be a two RBI single for George Jensen, and that's going to cut the lead to 6-5. All kinds of excitement here with two down. What, what an absolute hot shot there. Umpire was moving out of the way. Didn't want no piece of that at all. A good shot by Jensen. And that will put the game within one. Out of all the errors being made, it's pretty much it's a one nothing game at this point. <laughs> and I'm sure that's probably what both of these teams want. Almost just to, at this point, start again. And my, to continue my thought, right down the field looks absolutely beautiful. Two hours ago, I don't think people would have probably figured it would look like this. You see Grabling Hoff going and knocking the clay out of his cleats a couple times, but otherwise it's just perfect. First pitch was high. Was it's a passed ball. So Jensen now in scoring position. Carson Stormo at the plate. He's the four in the lineup. Plenty capable of getting Jensen in and tying the game. And again, he came into tonight's play with three hits in six at-bats. A couple walks and a couple RBIs to show for his efforts so far. 1-0. 
count for Stormo. Pitch is on the way. Going to be off the mark for ball two. Two zero. Pitch is on the way from Greblinghoff. And on the inside corner, called strike one. Can you get the other uh, camera up from the outfield fence? I just want to show people the second baseman's jockeying back and forth a little bit. You can't quite, well, you see is there you can see him in the picture, but he's trying to keep Jensen close out there at second. Then he retreats, does a nice job of filling the hole. There's a swing and a miss for strike two. There we go. A little further out on the pitcher batter, but we'll live with it for a pitch or two. 2-2 two, two, two count. Deuces are wild with a runner at second. That's Braxton Emery trying to keep Jensen honest. Now he's going to retreat. And here's the pitch. This ball lifted foul. I believe it's going to be out of play. Bra Braden Althoff thought he had a beat on it for a minute. Carson Stormo spoils that pitch, and he's going to get another look at a 2-2 pitch here. There was no, no way that ball was changing course. Wind is absolutely dead out there. Two-two pitch yet again, and up at eye level, ball three. So Kent will be full with a runner on second and two outs. I don't know if our mic picked it up, but I've seen it a couple times, actually a few times, several times in the last couple weeks. Grebling Hoff, once in a while, will let out a grunt when he releases. Payoff pitch stays just low. Good discipline from Stormo there. Just going to take a walk, let the next batter come up with the fresh count. And bring up Christian Rodriguez. I saw Dalton Locke come out of the dugout, and I saw him look down toward the bullpen. There's nobody down there, so I don't know what he's going to do, but we'll step away from 30 seconds and let him decide. Welcome back. Looks like Griblinghoff going to uh, clean off the clay from his cleats. Just a quick meeting on the mound. A couple words probably trying to calm Griblinghoff down. Two outs want to get out of this inning without letting another run in to tie this up. Pitch count for Griblinghoff now up to 46. In the first inning he threw 26 pitches of which 16 were strikes. And in the second inning 20. 10 of them have been strikes. Rodriguez here at the plate. The five batter in this lineup with runners on first and second. Christian hit a tape measure shot. I said I'd come back to it, and I forgot to, but he had a blast that cleared the fence. It was rule the ground rule double. Everybody has now since agreed that, yeah, that was a mistake. Um, even the outfielders said, oh, yeah, that cleared the fence. And you could tell by their body language. I mean, the one, the center fielder was at the fence and watched it sail over. And the left fielder converging on it also, just based on his body angle, you could tell that it was out. I'm not trying to cast dispersions. I'm just pointing out that the young man should have a home run to show for his efforts here in the state tournament. He did knock in a run on that and did finally come around to score. So... In effect, it was a moot point. And Christian Rodriguez, with his build and his capabilities, he's going to hit a lot of home runs. So that'll be a 
footnote in the annals of history before long. Rodriguez sitting with the 2-0 count. Pitch will be on the way high and out for ball three. Now I'm going to tell you something. If I'm Brad Nome right now, I'm telling Christian, if you like it, you swing at it. It's got to be his pitch, though. Got to be. You got to be a little bit patient. Not anywhere close. That one's high. Rodriguez on board via the four-pitch walk. And that'll bring up Jackson Wadsworth. Greblinghoff seems a little disgusted with himself, but I'm going to tell you, in the end, that's probably not a bad outcome. Yes, now you have two runners in scoring position, but Christian is dangerous. Jackson Wadsworth, now the batter. He's 0 for 1 on the night. 2 for 7 coming in to play tonight. 286 batting average prior to this game. He's saying, I can be dangerous too. First pitch stays at a, oh, going to stay, actually going to hit that for strike one. Looked a little high from up here. You guys probably had a better look at it than we did. Oh, one on the way. Swung, taken up, center fielders, not going to get to it in time. That's going to bring in one, two. Going to get a nice two RBI, two RBI smash okay. out to shallow center. That was a nice rip by Jackson Wadsworth. Went down and got it, dropped the bat head. Lines it out to Taylor Deagle, takes a short hop off him. It's going to be a straight single, no error, as it was a very difficult situation once it skipped in front of him. And just like that, Lake Norton Badger has put two more up on the board and is now in lead of this game by one. I'm not even going to start venturing guesses as to how this thing is going to end, but seven runs on the board for Lake Norton and six for Groton through two. I made a comment the other day that it'd probably be a race to 20, and but that run scoring stopped pretty much. So, But at this point, each team has two hits on the board and a host of errors. Pitch up high, called ball one. This <laughs> is Turner Stevenson at the plate. Gribbling off just needs to calm down here. Get his pitches back under his control. Been sending high. Turner Stevenson started this inning off. That's the first pitch that he's seen that's been a strike. Walked on four pitches in his first at bat earlier in the inning and then took a first ball off the plate. Now gets a hack at one. It's 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one, going to be a little high, a little outside. Grebling Haas pitch count now up to 55. Both these pitchers burning a lot of pitches in, in the early innings, but it uh, has a lot to do with the defense that has had some miscues. 2-1 is fired and stays in. Will be 3-1. And as a person who used to pitch a fair amount, you know, it's oftentimes tough. When you got to throw a lot of extra pitches, it's a tough to stay mentally strong. You start to get frustrated. You start to try to overthrow, thinking you've got to do it all yourself, and there's ball four. And that's going to bring up Riker Warrington. He's 0 for 0 on the night. In his first plate appearance, he sacrificed bunted, and that led to good things for Lake Norton as the run scored. And he's coming to the plate with bases loaded. First pitch going to be up high, ball one. And I'll tell you another thing about it. If you've struggled as a pitcher, oftentimes you throw that borderline pitch and you want it and you don't get it. And there's just something about it. An umpire hasn't seen consistency, and so when you, you get that borderline pitch, they set up on the inside corner, and when you throw one on the outer half or maybe over the outside corner. Yeah, they're not looking for it there. There's a called strike. Two and one down the count with two down and runners everywhere. Christian Rodriguez at 
Third base, Jackson Wadsworth at second, and Turner Stevenson at first. 2 1 stays on the end. So, Riker Warrington going to see a 3 1 pitch. There's no room for him. Grebling Hoff going to try to throw one across the plate. At this point, if you're the coach, you say, see how far you can hit it. Just don't give him a free pass. And we'll stay up high. We'll overfill bases and draw one in. Dalton Lock going to come out. He's got a glove in his hand. There's going to be a defensive change or two. Actually, Seth Erickson out of the dugout with another glove. So we're going to have to figure out what the defensive changes are. We'll be back in a minute or a minute and a half. enjoying the student productions of your school. Tonight's event and every event. New pitcher on the mound for Groton is Braden Althoff. Ryan Greblinghoff goes to shortstop. Dylan Ablin out to right field and Logan Ringenberg comes in to first base. Althoff coming into a very sticky situation with bases loaded. Only have to get one out. Definitely doable. Just don't overthink it. Althoff played high school ball down here. He's one of the very likable kids of the game. It's money, uh, money at the plate and generally been a very good pitcher. He used to completely terrorize our Clark players. It was nice to have him on our side for a year. He's in to try to put out a fire right now. Got a strong arm. Pitched a little bit last night, took a line shot off the shin and did come out of that game. But because of that, he saved pitches and he's able to throw tonight with the full boat. First pitch was high and away. Ball one. Second pitch on the way. Swung at, lifted into left. Going to drop shallow. Going to score two. Almost jinxed that one. I didn't think that throw was going to have a shot. Colby Dunker got in there in a hurry and made a nice strong throw to the plate. And you're right, he made it way closer than I thought it ever would be. But Brad Nome was wheeling his runner from the minute it hit, from the minute um, Thuey made contact. Oh, and by the way, that was Ryland Thuey. Sorry about that, Ryland. Dawson Nome now the better. 0 for 1. Gonna try to extend the lead. Now 10-6 to six in favor of Lake Norton. Runners on first and second. Here's the pitch. Taken low for ball one. Looks like we might have at the end of this inning, whenever it gets over, it's starting to look like first quarter of a football game just got over. <laughs> Called strike one. Put that count at a one and one. Gnome with the 1-1. Pitch on the way. Going to be down low. No runners can advance on that. Brevin Fleece did a nice job of blocking that one. I think it clipped him in the shin guard. Kept it in front of him, and as you said, nobody moved up. Biggest thing being a catcher. As long as that ball is in front of you and you know where it is, you pretty much control the runners. The outside, ball three. 
fans getting a little impatient. The 3 1 hit out to left and going to be foul. Hard seeing it from the angle here in the box. The camera shows it a little bit better. I had a decent look, and I would say it was a foot or so foul. Yes, as Chris Bokinski says, thanks to those nicely painted lines, I'd like to uh, point out that the mowing job was awfully wonderful as well. Full count here. You re -mowed. But I saw what happened the last time you mowed. <laughs> Full count here for Noam with two <laughs> outs. like a child had done it. <laughs> and we'll watch it go by for a ball. Noam going to draw the walk. This game now about an hour and ten minutes old, and we're still in the bottom of the second. Moving along at a snail's pace, but there's been a whole lot of action. Bases full of Lake Norton Badgers. Swing it's probably a and a miss. Decent, decent mascot for them. Tyson Stevenson, 0 for 1, coming into this plate appearance. Struck out swinging and out on a sacrifice fly to right. Second pitch, grounded up the middle. Althoff got a little bit of a glove on it. Oh. That was a foot switch there by Greblinghoff at short. Took his right off. It had to step back on and just made it back on time. Or made it to second on time. That's... I don't even know how to announce that one. It's either that or a fielder's choice. I'd say it's a hit all the way. I don't know if they'd have had a, a play at first base, but there's going to be a change out there at second right now. That's incredibly tough. I think that's Corbin Cucker taking the field now at second base. George Jensen, the batter. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Nathan. If you're groating on that one, probably better just to pretend that play never happened. That was tough. Down low, ball two. Batter here is, looks like, that is number 12. Yeah, this is George Jensen. It is George Jensen. George Jensen, ooh, got his hands in on a, on a ball inside. I thought it was going to slip over the first baseman's head, but I had it measured a little bit wrong. So Jensen lines out to Logan Ringenberg at first, and that's going to reach out of the side. There were nine hits. Four, I'm sorry, nine runs, four hits, three errors, and three men left on base. We'll head into the top of the third inning. Lake Norton Badger now leading Groton 11 to 6, and we'll be back in one minute. Produced by your school during the school year, are created, filmed, and produced by the students you love to follow and support. Become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor. It's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community. As a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. Welcome back 
two uh, championship baseball action here at the Class B Junior Legion level at Dakota Style Field in Clark, South Dakota. Beautiful, be beautiful field and an awesome ground crew made this game possible tonight. Pitch down the middle, going to be a called strike one. Corbin Cucker, I believe. Yes, Corbin Cucker with his first plate appearance of this game. Defensive change in the last inning. And that ball is off the plate. One one the count. One one on the way. Cocker going to swing through and miss. One two. Cocker checks in in the tournament 0 for 3. Has an RBI and a couple runs scored. On base via the hit batsman and the walk. Time called by Cocker. They lost Braxton Emery's bat. He was two for six in the tournament so far with a single and a double and three RBIs and two runs scored. One, two on the way. Cocker going to send a grounder. Shortstop takes it on a hop and going to miss the throw at first. Another error on, on that tally. So Cocker going to reach on the air. And this will bring up going to be uh, Dylan Nina. Ablin. Dylan Ablin. Ablin now out in right field. He pretty much plays anywhere. There's a lot of pitching, but plays a fair amount of infield. When they made the changes, they put him out in right field. First pitch taken for a called strike. Nice breaking ball there. Started at almost top of the strike zone, then dr then broke right at the knees. Don't know how you swing at that one. Oh, one swing and a miss on the fastball. Are you ready to have your minds blown? There are currently 17 runs on the board. One of them has been earned. Don't That's a lot of. A lot of extra pitches. There's a balk called. I was looking down at my screen, so I don't know exactly what he did, but Corbin Cucker on base via the error, and now on second base via the balk. I think if you're going to be either Lake Norton or Groton's coach, you're not going to want to look at that statistic after this is all said and done. Well, lifted out into center field. That's Turner Stevenson covering a lot of ground, getting there and making the play. Good jump on that right off the bat. The batter now is Brevin Fleece. He's over 0 on the night. Walked in his first plate appearance. And as I mentioned, he's been productive in that nine hole in the order. Two for five. A couple singles, four RBIs, three runs scored, and a couple walks. over the course of the previous two days, that is. Fleece waiting for his first pitch on the way. Going to be down low. Nice stop by Rodriguez. Christian works hard back there. Second pitch on the way. Going to be just outside. Tyson Stevenson now up to 69 pitches over the course of two and a third innings. 2-0 from Stevenson. Down low. Will get away from Rodriguez on that one. And Tucker will advance to third. I wish I'd have been looking at the camera because I couldn't tell if that skipped in. I know that Rodriguez tried to throw his weight in front of it. I would say it was probably a wild pitch. I'm getting a head nod from somebody with a much better angle than me. Than I. And that will be a walk. Put runners on the corners. 
Back to the top of the order for Groton. Taylor Deagle steps up. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Reached in an error by the third baseman and struck out swinging. Deagle here with a good hit. Can cut into that lead by Lake Norton. Run it over on third. Wonder if we'll see a steal here. First pitch right down the middle called strike. Deagle's a money ball player for Groton. Last year he terrorized the 14 and under ranks and we had a whole lot of problem with him. We ended up coming through the loser's bracket and nipping Groton a couple times. But Taylor Deagle, he's a spark plug, so he's going to try to knock in a run. See if he can't do some damage here in the top of the third inning. Rodriguez with another good save. 1-1 one, one count. He is definitely putting in his work behind the plate. Down at the bottom of your monitor, you see the runners. Pretty decent lead over there at first base, and the runner does go. And that's a wild pitch. It's going to get away. Tucker going to come in and score on that wild pitch. And that's one run cut into Lake Norton's lead. So credit Fleece with a stolen base. And the run comes across on the wild pitch. 2-1 for Deagle. Brevin Fleece in scoring position out there at second base. Count to Deagle is 2-1. Two 2-1 one. Two one is on the outside corner called strike two. Only one out here. Two two Deagle gonna send one sky to right and catch will be made. Wellington made the catch, gets it in. Runner not able to move up. Now batting Ryan Greblinghoff. He started at pitcher and now he's at shortstop. Hit a line drive out to right field for a base hit in his previous at bat and walked in his first plate appearance. Eleven to seven on the scoreboard right now in favor of Lake Norton Badger over Groton. Runner remains at second base. Here's the pitch and it's tapped up the middle. Oh, that's going to not get there in time. Going to be an error there. No, we give it a hit. Going to give that one a hit. Ryland threw, he ranged over, got a glove on it. It kicked out of his glove. Dawson Nome tried to recover and fired a first. Good thing George Jensen gloved it because that was earmarked for the fence. Batter now is Braden Althoff, always dangerous. One for two here on the evening. Althoff in the tournament so far. First pitch going to stay down low. Six for ten. With. He came into the night with five RBIs. He was leading the tournament, if I'm not mistaken. And three runs scored. And tonight... 1-0, Altoff going to sky it out to center. And it's going to be a catch there by the shortstop, and that will end the top of the third. And tonight, incidentally, Altoff has two RBIs, so he's got seven on the tournament so far, but he is kept off the base paths that time, and we'll be back in one minute with the inning summary.
welcome back to Dakota Style Field here in Clark, South Dakota. How about that inning summary, Mr. Greenfield? There was one run on one hit, one error, and two men left on base, and we hit into the bottom of the third inning. Carson Stormo steps up. He's 0 for 1 tonight. Previous at bat. Reached on a drop third strike and walked in his last plate appearance. First pitch stays upstairs, ball one. Braden Althoff now starts his second inning of work. He came in and logged one out in the previous inning. 1-0, upstairs as well. Two zero, and we will have one cross Broadway. Two and one, off the mark. I think a little low there on that one. Over here, running the computer and the camera shots. Don't get a look at that outfield camera too much. It's tempting, but I don't. 3 1. And we'll be down low. Stormo going to draw the base on balls. Rodriguez dodges out of the way of the bat, throwing back to the dugout. Seeing it coming all the way, just wanted to make it a little flashy. Braden Althoff objected at that call. Braden's not a kid that shows a lot of emotion out there. He just kind of stays within himself. So, pretty close, but Carson Stormo on. To start things off, and here's Rodriguez, and as I said, he's very dangerous. Will get called strike on that one. Not on the swing across the outside corner of the plate. Chad Felon listening in. Good evening, Counselor, and thank you for watching, and thank you for the nice compliment. Rodriguez will half swing at that one, though. We'll take his count 0-2. Carson Stormo with a fair lead over there at first with the lefty looking over at him. Althoff delivers. Well lifted high and foul. And it's going to get out of play. And one thing I noticed last night, Braden Althoff, when there's a runner on first base, pretty much always slide steps. So he's quick to the plate. It's going to be difficult for runners to try to move up. A better lead, though, at first base. About a half step more there. A quarter to a half a step more. Here's the pitch. Ball smashed down the third baseline and foul. Going to do her again. Rodriguez just waiting for that one. Oh, 2 still the count. Two strikes, two fouls. And how about a third foul just for fun? Folks, that is a great piece of hitting. He's just fouled two off hard down the third baseline. This time, Althoff tries to go outside, and defensive swing taps it foul toward the first base dugout. Couldn't do much else with it, but it was too close to take. Oh, two. He was golfing at that one. That Christian Rodriguez is going to be out. But Carson Stevenson moves I think I just said the wrong name. Carson Stormo, yes. Didn't sound right. He moves up on the wild pitch. Rodriguez just a little anxious on that one. Althoff came with an off-speed pitch. He's out in front of it. Couldn't lay off. But a runner on second base now with one down. And the batter is going to be Jackson Wadsworth, who is one for two on the night. Struck out swinging in his first at bat and single on a liner out to center field in his second. First pitch, Wadsworth going to reach and send it foul out of play. Hey, Bo, can you unplug that fan? That blue, it's on your side. Should be that blue in there. Thanks. I just don't want to reach. Oh, one now the count. All Hoff looks in, and here's the pitch. And there's a called strike over the inside corner. O two. 
Runner down on second with one out. Pitch on the way. Swung on and out of play. For Lake Norton, Turner Stevenson waits on deck. O2 grounded. That'll be over to second baseman. Oh, gonna be an error there. And that will score a run on the confusion. Gonna be an error on the first baseman there, I would assume. Correct. Just a tough game for both sides defensively. Total errors up on the board, sitting at 12. We got seven hits total on the board and 19 runs. Jackson Wadsworth did a nice job to go up and get that. It was out of the strike zone, but he put it in play. Was going to move the runner up regardless. He hustled down the baseline. Manages to get himself on as the ball was mishandled. That was kind of a defensive bunt there. This is Turner Stevenson. Defensive bunt. Pitch was inside the box. Ended up bunting it off just not to get hit himself. Riker Warrington, the, excuse me, Riker Warrington, the on-deck batter. Short lead over there at first base. Tapped foul, or <laughs> tapped back to the mound, rather. Braden Alhoff pounces on it and fires to first base. Credit Turner Stevenson with a sacrifice bunt and a tremendous hustle. Coming up. A lot closer than it should have been. Go ahead. Going to be Riker Warrington to the plate. Runner down on second in scoring position with two outs. Warrington still no official at bat on the evening. He bunted, moved the runner up in his first plate appearance and then walked. Takes a hack at that one and comes up empty, so it's 0-1. Second pitch on its way inside for a ball. One and one. Looks like Altoff going to take a moment to uh, clean his cleats out. I'm kind of curious because the mountain looks extremely dry with the exception of the ring around right by the grass. So I'm wondering if they're not getting extra clay in their cleats when they come up to take the throw back from the catcher. Really appreciate the job done by the grounds crew. Um, Matt Clark, Chris Bokinski, Hudson Fuller, Julian McElhone, some of the Clark players, Clark area players. 1-1, one, one, going to be taken up high. And I started a thought before and I didn't finish it. There were a whole lot of Groton people out there with rakes and providing some much-needed help in between games and in between rain showers. At one point, we thought that we were going to be able to play at about 5.30, 6 o'clock, and then the rains came again, and pretty quick we had puddles everywhere. Deuces wild, runner on second, and Warrington will take another cut and go down, swinging for out number three. For Lake Norton Badger in the bottom of the third, there was one run on no hits. There was one error and one man left on base. We'll head into the top of the fourth inning. Lake Norton Badger leading Groton 12-7, and we'll be back in one minute.
Welcome back to a beautiful Clark, South Dakota championship action underway in top of the fourth, the Groton at the dish. Batters, Colby Dunker, he's playing left field. First pitch to him. Taking the way for a ball. 0 for 2 on the evening is Dunker. Grounded into a fielder's choice. And reached on an error on the second baseman. This ball lifted out into right center field. Turner Stevenson is under it and makes the play for out number one. A quick fly out for out number one. Good way for the Lake Norton defense to get going. This is Logan Ringenberg at the plate. First pitch to him on the way. Stays up high for a ball. 1-0 current count. One zero on the way inside for ball two. Two zero, swung and a hot shot back into the screen. Ringer came into this at bat zero for one on the evening, flied out to the right fielder and then walked. Two one, nice breaking ball for called strike two. Two and two, the count with one down to Logan Ringenberg. Two two, a swing and a miss. Rodriguez is going to complete that with the catch behind there. Had to work for that catch, but he made it. Caleb Hoover steps up to the dish. He's 0 for 2 on the evening, playing third base for Groton. Sitting with a 2 up, 2 down here in the top of the fourth. Pitch on the way. Stays a little up high. Hoover, the great grandson of Sharon Berkey from Clark, grandson of Jerry Berkey from up in Groton. Here's the pitch. Down, Kate. though. Caleb, another one of those Groton kids that played ball with the Clark Area Baseball team last year in high school baseball, 2021. They had their own team this year. Nice young man. Here's the pitch. And that's away for ball three. Jordan Berkey also on that team. So Sharon had a grandson and a great-grandson on the team. I'm guessing she's here. The Rio will be watched inside, and that will be a four-pitch walk from Hoover. Tyson Stevenson now up to the 90-pitch mark, so mentally the light is at the end of the tunnel. He knows he can only throw 15 more or somewhere thereabouts, but uh, he'd like to chew up a, f a little bit more time on the mound. Get him a few more outs. The batter is Corbin Cucker. He's 0 for 1 on the night. Came in as a defensive replacement. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. If I remember last time he was up, he reached on an error. And you are correct. Hit it out there to the shortstop. First, oh, yeah. Go first ahead. pitch was a strike. Second pitch, swing and a miss. Well, four strike two. Oh, two with two outs. Runner down on first. And pitch on the way. Cocker will swing and miss. Go down swinging. Full out. Number three. For Groton, there were no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. We'll head into the bottom of the fourth. Lake Norton still leading 12 7, and we will be back in a minute.
welcome back to uh, Dakota Style Field. Looks like we have number seven, Rylan Thuey, at the dish. First pitch, going to hit the outside corner, strike one. Rylan comes into this at bat one for two on the night. Hit a hard ground ball and reached on an error over there on the left side of the infield and then singled on a fly ball to left field out there in left center-ish, we'll call it. Second pitch, going to skip in. We'll run the count at one and one. Ryland batting ninth in the order, so he's going to try to start things off for the top. Set the table. And, ooh, he was a few inches away from doing just that. Hoover laid out, went to his knees anyway, and not able to come up with it as it landed foul just beyond third base. Wade Stobbs, good look at that one, and I absolutely agree. It, there wasn't a question. It was a few inches foul. So that, lifted out into center field. Go ahead. That ball definitely not foul, but getting over the center fielder's head. It was kind of the center fielder not happy, to, happy with himself good on call. that misjudge. All right. Hudson Fuller and I back and forth, forth and back. Here's the deal. It, it froze the center fielder for just a minute, and then he tried to re retreat. If he'd have been on his horse right away, instead of misjudging it just briefly, he would have had it. Instead, it goes for an error. Pitcher threw his arms up like, you got to be kidding me. A couple of people out there on the field, in fact. Dawson Gnome sends one high, gets a chance to redeem himself. That one a sky ball. Deagle with a really strong arm on the throw in. He was deep out there, probably, oh, I don't know, 35 feet maybe in front of the 354 sign. He had at least at least a 260-foot throw, and he made it awfully close over there at third base. Runner 90 feet away here for Lake Norton. Up to bat have number nine, Tyson Stevenson. First pitch on the way. Going to be on the inside corner. Stevenson look, made that look a lot more inside than I think it was. Oh one Breaking is going to be hit. Hoover going to clean up. Oh. I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Hoover made a heck of a play over there at third base, but Ryland Thuey didn't break right away. And when he did, I thought for sure that throw was going to come home. Credit Hoover with an outstanding play to get the out, but uh, Ryland Thuey took a chance and ended up sliding in safely. It uh, could have gone a whole different direction, however. Absolutely. I think for Hoover there, though, when you're getting up, you're just kind of reflexed over to first so that's that's where you're already kind of trained to go you're just going to get up and go so Lake Norton has extended their lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning to 13-7 George Jensen the batter is down in the count oh one and now one one I hate to say it there's a little nip in the air Feels more like a uh, football Friday night than a baseball night in August. We're getting we're getting close to those Friday nights. And speaking of that, that was mentioned in between games that you know people have a they have things going on and football practice is rolling now. So that's one of the I mean. We weren't going to put players in jeopardy. If we couldn't have played tonight, we wouldn't have played tonight. But uh, people thought about it. Oh, oh wow. Corbin Tucker does a nice job. I'll tell you what, I was watching Dylan Ablin out there in right field. He threw his arms out. He didn't have a bead on it at all. He couldn't see it in that night sky. That's mm, It's a tough sky right now. But Corbin Tucker ranges out there into the shallow right field and makes the play. And that's going to retire the side. I'll get you an inning summary when we come back.
Welcome back to Dakota Style Field. Going to have to s roll over my innings here. I will let Brock do the summary. For Lake Norton in the bottom of the fourth, there was one run on no hits. There was one error and one man left on base. Here in the fifth inning, Dylan Ablin is going to lead things off. Tyson Stevenson now creeping up on that 105 pitch mark. He starts here at 93. And just a reminder, if he starts a new batter, Prior to the 105 mark, he may finish that batter. First pitch, staying low, ball one. Second pitch, down the middle, one and one. Time called. Stevenson hovering at the 55% mark as far as strikes. Greblinghoff was a little bit below 50. He was at 48.39 uh, in his work. Althoff, since he came in, he's been above the 65% mark. 2-1 count. On the way down low, ball three. Pitch number 97 there on the board. Abelin is the eight batter in the order here for Groton. Waiting on deck, Brevin Fleece. And he'll be coming up with a runner on base. Good way to start for Groton here in the top of five. Get that first man on. Then going to bring up Felice, the nine batter. Then roll over to the top. First pitch is on the way. Going to be spiked. Rodriguez lost it. That's going to be an easy advance for Ablin. Rodriguez did what he could. He tried to adjust his body, but it was a... In between hop, not a short hop, glanced off him and he couldn't immediately locate it. Brevin Flea still not with a an official at bat here tonight. He's walked in his previous two plate appearances. Second pitch to Flea's going to be low inside, and that will be Stevenson breaking the hundred mark. Two zero on the way. Down low will be ball three. Three zero on the way. Down low and that will be Fleece drawing drawing a base on balls. So but now. Go ahead. Puts runners on first and second. First and second with the top of the order, Taylor Deagle up. Taylor is 0 for 3 on the night, but he's always dangerous. He's hit a ground ball and reached on an error over to third. He struck out swinging and flied out to right, so he sprayed it around a little bit. Stevenson nears the end of his evening, and there's a ball. 103 now on the board. We'll let him finish out Deagle. Second pitch on the way. Called strike. Deagle took all the way there. And I think, well, he looks a little disgusted, but I think he had it in mind that that will be the difference between Stevenson being able to move on and possibly face somebody else. This is the last batter he will face, and he throws one out into center field. Tried to pick up a cheap out. Dylan Ablin back in, and as the ball squirted out into center field, he moves up. 
So runners on the corners. Could be a, a steal opportunity for Fleas. Probably not. I haven't seen Groton try for a steal almost all night. I think Fleece actually has one now, now that you mention it. You're right. They haven't moved up a lot, but let's take a look. Brevin Fleece. Groton has three stolen bases on the night, and Fleece is credited with one of those. Oh, well, stand corrected. Pitch take up on the inside corner. That'll put the count at 1-2. Taylor Deagle with the other two. As I mentioned, he's 0 for 3, but he's been on base and wreaked a little havoc when he got on base. There goes the runner. If I'm Lake Norton, I'm getting the out and not worrying about the run. No, I wouldn't either. That's Dang. a good job of by Dawson Dome of closing in and getting the out. I'd trade outs for runs at this point. Stevenson to Jensen to Nome. Ablin scores on the stolen base. Count is one and two. It's going to be interesting here. I'm going to have a conversation on the mound here. Stevenson can still finish. I think Brad just got ahead of himself thinking, well, that's the out, and now we got to go take him out. This will be the last batter. I looked down in the bullpen, too, to just see if he's trying to buy a reliever some time to get loose. There's nobody down there, so I think he just pulled the trigger a little bit early. 13-8 now the score with Lake Norton leading Groton. Low for a ball. 2-2. Two and two. Deagle wanted a piece of it, able to hold back. Everybody's a little off tonight, even the coaches. 2-2 on the way. Deagle going to send one to the shortstop. Handled clean. And just in time. Dawson Nome took a lot of time there getting rid of that ball. And I'm not sure if he just didn't have a good handle on it or what the deal was. But he shuffle-stepped a couple times and threw the ball over what appeared to be possibly late to a lot of the fans. But punched out is Taylor Deagle. And that is going to end the inning or end the evening for uh, T Tyson Stevenson. So Carson Stormel looks like he's going to be the new pitcher. We'll step away for a minute, let him get warmed up, and we'll be back. enjoying the student productions of your school. Tonight's event and every event produced by your school during the school year are created, filmed, and produced by the students you love to follow and support. Become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor. It's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community. As a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options. One. Welcome back. Getting going here with the new pitcher. I'll let Brock do the defense changes. Carson Stormo now on the mound. Tyson Stevenson moves to second base and Ryland Thuy over to third base. Ryan Greblinghoff is going to be the batter. He's two for two on the night. Looking to bat himself into a batting title, ladies and gentlemen. There is action down in the bullpen for Groton. I'm trying to see. I think that's Cucker. 
Did pitch yesterday a little bit at the end of the game. One zero to Grebling Hoff. Second pitch going to be down low for ball two. Two zero pitch is on the way. Down low, ball three. In his previous at bats. Single on a line drive out to right center field and single on a ground ball to the second baseman also walked in his first plate appearance. Three zero, going to take ball four down low. Grebling off now in a very good spot as far as winning that batting title. Braden Althoff started the evening in a good good situation. He's one for three on the night. Not that it's about batting championships, but I like to see the young men get accolades for jobs well done. Althoff is always dangerous. As I said earlier, he hits a lot of line drives. First pitch down low. Came into tonight with five RBIs for Goten. Has tallied two this evening. Pig off. Oh, that was close. They caught Grebling Hoff leaning, and he just managed to get back in ahead of the tag. Don't think he's going to be getting caught like that again. He's got a good lead. Stormo may have rushed his delivery just a little bit, trying to, or anticipating that Grebling Hoff might be on the move. As a pitcher, I used to try to do anything I could to get it to the plate quicker. I didn't throw particularly hard, and so I wanted to get rid of it. I slide-stepped, and I'd try to cut down on my motion. Called strike. Put it at a 2-1 count. Rodriguez popped up as if he was going to throw down, but chose not to. Riker Warrington, moderately deep. I'd say pretty deep out there in right field. Time called by Althoff. And I'm not going to kid you, I would be too. Althoff is one of those guys that can hit it anywhere with authority. 2-1, pick off. Oh. Grebling off just at his absolute limit for his lead. If I was Riker Warrington, though, I would probably be playing a little bit more over in the gap. Just an observation. He's pretty close to the line for Althoff. Now watch him be perfectly positioned. 3-1 count. Two outs, runner down at first here for Groton. Pitch on the way and down low. Well, with two down here, one run already in. There are now runners on first and second. And who's up but the cleanup hitter, Colby Dunker. Dunker sprayed the ball pretty much up the middle from between the shortstop to the between the, and I'm sorry, between the shortstop and second baseman, had one fly out to center field, but that would imply that his timing is pretty much on as he takes first one for a ball. 1-0. Second pitch on the way. Down low, ball two. Is Carson Storm are going to have to find his rhythm and hit his stride. He has thrown 11 pitches, and I didn't realize it till I just looked. One of those has been a strike. There's... A close one just off the plate inside. Brad Nome going to come out and try to settle them down. We're going to step away for 30 seconds. Kings in more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day.
Welcome back. Pitch going to be there for a strike after the mound visit. Put that at a three and one count for Dunker. Pitch on the way. Strike over the outside corner. Well, so far, credit Brad Nome for going out there and settling him down. As a coach, you always love to see it. It makes you look like a genius. Like, oh, he must have really said something that inspired him. And there's a ball lifted foul, I think. Yeah, that's long gone. I don't know where that is. Or I'll tell you what, Jackson Wadsworth got over there into foul territory, camped under it, and made a nice play. He, I didn't know if he'd get to it in the first place. I didn't know if it'd stay in play in the second place. And he camped under it and hauled it in. And that's going to be out number three. There was one run on no hits, one error, and two men left on base. We'll head into the bottom of the fifth inning. Lake Norton coming to bat leading 13-8. We'll be back in one minute. Welcome back to Dakota Style Field here in Clark, South Dakota. Looks like, uh, let's see, Rodriguez to the plate, going to ground one immediately, and will be a base hit. Goes out and gets that one, taps it out in right field. Sets the table. Braden Althoff flips the ball to the umpire. Probably got a little bit wet. After all the rainfall we've had, there might have been some drying that took place for a little while, but now that nightfall has set in, things are probably going to be getting pretty damp. Jackson Wadsworth, now the batter, one for three on the evening with Christian Rodriguez over at first base. Braden Althoff comes set, checks the runner. Decent lead over there. Leaning back toward first, though. Swing and a miss and an outside pitch for strike one. A little better lead this time. Almost daring him to throw over. That ball is going to eat up. Grebling hop at shortstop and it's going to be an error. Very tough night for Graveling Hoff. Well, let's be honest, and you brought it up off mic in between innings. It's been a tough night for a lot of people, pitchers namely. There have been two earned runs in this game out of the 21 on the board. The batter now is going to be Turner Stevenson. He's 0 for 0 on the night playing center field. He walked twice and had a sacrifice bunt. There's another attempt at a bunt, but it's going to be popped up. Not going to get the job done this time as Braden Althoff hustled in and fielded it. Took a look around to see if anybody had strayed too far, and that was not the case. 
One of the absolute things you do not want to do in bunting. Don't pop it up. It will stay up there too long and somebody is going to come grab it. I messed up twice now on that scoring, so I got a shot right. Oh, what a grab from Cocker. Going to tag up for the double play. So there was a pinch hitter for Riker Warrington. I'm going to try to grab that name before we go to our break. That was Aiden Abraham hitting that line drive out to Cucker, and Cucker doubles off Christian Rodriguez at second base. So Lake Norton goes down without scoring any more runs. They continue to lead 13-8. to I'll have the inning summary when we come back. Welcome back to championship action here in Clark, South Dakota, Class B Junior Legion State Baseball Tournament in Game 11, the final one. Earlier today, Belfouche knocked off winner Colombe in the 5th and 6th place game, securing that consolation championship. Winner Colombe played three pretty hard-fought games. Any one of them could have gone either way. They go home with sixth place, but could have easily been in this game. Lennox then downed the Clark Willow Lake Clark area team eight to one. It was a lot closer game than the final score would indicate. Um, actually, a rally got started on a strikeout that dipped into the dirt, and a runner got on base. As I think the runners were on second, and third, one scored. If I'm not, if I'm not uh, misspeaking, but. Had a little bit of a letdown there for a minute, and um, a few runs scored, but ultimately it was a pretty clean ball game, and uh, clipped right along. I looked at one point in the what, sixth inning, or was it in the top of the seventh, and I think we were at the 114 mark for game time, so it was a nice, nicely played game. I told the boys afterwards I was proud of them, and I was very happy with their performance today. I couldn't say the same last night in a game that got all kinds of ugly but here we are in the in the final game championship action and Lake Norton leads Groton Groton running out of chances they're down to their final six outs sending Logan Ringenberg uh, Ling, <laughs> Logan Ringenberg to the plate is the Groton crew Logan is now playing first base started at Started in right, moved to first when Braden Althoff came in. He flied out to the right fielder. He walked, and he has struck out swinging. First pitch, going to go for a ball. Boy, I'm starting to struggle to talk, and I'll tell you what, i got to go home and dry my clothes and then throw things together and head to Mitchell yet tonight. Got state amateur baseball tournament going on down there. I've got my room. As I'm the official scorer down there, I've had people filling in for me the last few nights and taking taking uh, residence in that room. But tomorrow, at one o'clock, I'm going to be in Parkston for the June or for the Legion All Star Game. There's a called strike. I've got many miles to go before I sleep, and I wish I didn't have clothes in the dryer or in the washer. Swing and a miss from Ringberg, going to even that count at two and two. And the kicker is I stepped away for a few minutes to throw things in the washer, and I thought, I'm going to be able to get things in the dryer before I leave. I was about three minutes shy of being able to do that. Strike right at the knees. Ringenberg going to go down looking for out number one here in the top of the sixth. 
So there's uh, Nathan keeping you apprised of what's going on in the game while I keep you apprised of what's going on on the home front. The batter now is Caleb Hoover, 0 for 2 on the night. Third baseman for Groton. Hoover, skies one, probably back toward us. Nope, clears us. I got a hunch that one's not coming back. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's chasing anymore, but not in the darkness. Popped up right foul territory. Going to get by the fence and get down. Credit George Jensen and Tyson Stevenson for being on the move there, hustling all the way and making it fairly close over there. They covered a lot of ground. It was I didn't give them a chance off the bat. It fell harmlessly, but they did make a good effort. 0-2 oh, on the way. Hoover going to just foul it off. Hoover expanding the strike zone a little bit there, but when you're down in the count, you got to do what you got to do to stay alive. He didn't want to turn that one over to the ump's judgment, so he fouled it off and gets another look. And he does so again. Four pitches in this at bat, four foul balls. Hoover been pretty dead set on swinging. No balls on the board. Storm will probably going to throw one. We're waiting for uh, lights over in a driveway across the street to be turned off. There Headlights, we there we go. It's somebody not here for the ball game. They're trying to go home for the night. Backed in and their lights remained ablaze. So Hoover back in there. Carson Storm will back on the mound. Here's the 0-2 again. Man, Hoover going to send one to third. Throw across the diamond on time on target. What a throw. Ryland Thuey set himself, and he threw a laser beam over to first base. Didn't, didn't show any signs of being worried about whether the ball was damp or anything, he got got his feet set and just fired. Cucker here at the plate. First pitch, going to hug him inside. Cucker 0 for 2 on the evening. Reached on an error and struck out. Going to be a low ball 2. 2-0 two the count to Cucker with 2 down. Two zero, going to be uh, low again. Ball three. Now I mentioned earlier that Carson Storm would come in, and I think through the first eleven pitches, one had been a strike. He's now at twelve out of twenty-eight, so he's coming with a lot more strikes at this point. Started Cucker off with three balls in a row, and comes back with a strike. Three one down the middle, going to be hit and gonna drift foul. And again, talk about hustling. Christian Rodriguez fired out of there. Stormwell got off the rubber, and Ryland Thuey hustled in. And they weren't gonna let that thing come back fair once it had squirted foul. Cucker with the full count, two outs. Has been a two up, two down. And going to send a grounder over and throw. Going to get to the wall. Ryland Thuy not able to handle that one cleanly as it squirted away from him. And he fires errantly to first base. It's going to be an error. Take a look at the board. Groton has scored eight runs on three hits, seven errors on the game so far that they've committed, and Lake Norton Badger, 13 runs, five hits, and nine errors. Very uncharacteristic. We've seen these teams a number of times. They're usually very sure-handed. Ooh, almost another one there. Good handle. George Jensen is about 6'5". 
I looked at him last night when I shook his hand, and I figured he had a, an inch or two on me. Actually, I didn't, I didn't shake his hand. I walked past him. Needed almost every inch of it on that throw over, though. Storm one corked a wild pitch there, and that allowed the runner to move up as it was a ball. Dylan Ablin, the batter, he's 0 for 1 on the night. He has three plate appearances, two walks, and a fly out to center field. Pitch on the way, called strike right down Broadway. One one stayed up high. Dylan Ablin, one of those kids that played ball for us last year in high school. He's a nice young man and he offers a lot to any baseball team. It's kind of the glue that holds the team together, if you ask me. He and Alt They're all good guys. I'm not gonna s I, I shouldn't have started naming them, but just really steady. 3-1 upstairs, and that will be a base on balls. So he's on base the third time tonight via the base on balls. And take a moment while Brevin Fleece strips off the shin guards. Fleece, no official at bats on the evening. Walk, walk, and walk. When a guy strikes out four times on the night, they call it the golden sombrero. I'm not sure what happens if a guy walks four times. I'll we'll have to make something up. <laughs> High for ball one. Just as quickly as I talked about Stormo coming back with strikes, he's starting to struggle a little bit, laboring here in the bottom, top of the sixth. There's a called strike. Called strike. Rodriguez fires it back. He's got a strong arm. And I can't believe, after pitching yesterday, the pop that he still has in his arm might be in a sling. Oh, look at that out in center field. You can't even see the kid. Well, you can see his legs, but because of all the moisture, you got a little ground fog. Take a picture of that. Don't know how often you're going to see that on a baseball field. That's eerie. After this, I'll zoom out on my outfield camera and show you from that look. Wild pitch. Runners going to advance. Put it at a 3-1 count now. I think everybody kind of saw it about the same time because I heard some some uh, gasps and some giggles. And well, I was kind of wondering what it was out there. It looked like almost overshadow on the lights, but I was like, that don't look right. I was going to mention it off break, but as they got to it first, you can almost see it coming up around the camera right now. High fly, going to take itself out. Three and two to count with two down. Runners on second and third. Dylan, or Brevin Fleece, trying to turn things over to the top of the lineup. Here's the payoff pitch from Stormo. Skied on the infield. Dawson Nome ranges back. He calls everybody off and takes it for out number three. For Groton, there were no runs, no hits. One error and two men left on base. 27 pitches in that inning, so it wasn't easy, but they managed to hold Groton at bay, and Lake Norton will be coming up, trying to add some insurance runs to their lead. They're leading 13-8, and we'll be back in one minute.
squad. Welcome back to Dakota Style Field, getting underway here in the bottom of the sixth. Lake Norton coming to bat. Kind of a shot of the ground fog out there from center field. You can see the haze over the center field shot. Pitch on the way. Going to be a called strike. Batter here looks like we got number uh, seven, Rylan Thuey. Thuey one for three on the night. Follows this one off. Puts him at an 0-2. Hit a hard ground ball to the left side, reached on an error. Singled on a fly ball out to left field and hit a line drive. And reached on an error by the center fielder. Stays up at eye level. One, two, now the count. One, two, going to be a swing. I don't know what that was. Drop third strike. And that looks like Philly's going to run through. Sarda didn't hesitate. Said he swung. And Rylan Thuey very alertly took off knowing that that got to the screen. Wild pitch. Dawson Nome now up to bat. He's 0 for 2 on the night. Playing shortstop for the Lake Norton Badger program. He's walked a couple times, reached on an air, and flied out to center. Pitch outside, ball one. Second pitch on the way, going to hit inside corner. One one the count to Nome. Will be down in the dirt for ball two. Coach Brad Nome has had the privilege of coaching his three sons last number of years. Dawson, the youngest. Oh, hot shot right back at the pitcher. And oh boy. Braden Althoff did a heck of a job to get his glove on that hot shot. Fielded it and then threw it high to Logan Ringenberg at first base. So no one is going to reach on the error. That's just, on, I mean, kind of on par for the night. Just a tough play, kind of tough outcome. Tyson Evenson, Stevenson, sorry. Tyson Stevenson now the batter. He's one for three. Playing second base now after starting on the mound. Struck out swinging. Sacrifice flied out to right field. Single on a ground ball back to the pitcher and grounded out to the third baseman. Groton center fielder going to just part enough so you can see that pitch. Bunt, throw to first. Ringenberg just able to keep his foot on that bag. Throw was off. Good athleticism. That will get the other two moved over into scoring position. And George Jensen to the plate. Jensen, the three batter. And deadly there at the plate. First pitch stays upstairs. One oh. Swing and a foul tip for strike one. It's a real eerie fog, as I mentioned earlier, and a couple times I thought, well, it's about to dissipate and then it comes back with a vengeance. 1-1. One, one, fouled fastly back into the screen. Down in the count now. 1-2 and two is Jensen. Althoff looks in for a sign. Nods. Comes set and fires. Fouled off.
One two pitch, going to be on the way again. And fired. And another fouled off. Jensen doing a good job staying alive. One, two, grounded Hoover. Gonna make sure he stays. Throw and then play it home. A nice head first dive. Going to slide across home plate and bring in the run. And another play, nobody watching what's going on. Good base running. Able to come in and score two runs there. I was looking down thinking the play was over. I looked up, got a runner gunning into home. I'm just trying to digest everything that just went on. I was really impressed that George Jensen got a bat on that ball. Did a good job to shoot it down there to Hoover. Hoover did a nice job to look, the, look at the runner, freeze him, fired across. The return throw to the plate, just not in time. And then Dawson Nome recognized that, hey, nobody's paying any attention to me, and I'm going to put the pressure on him. We're up 14-8. to eight. Make him make a play. And by the time they recognized what was going on, he was across with the 15th Lake Norton run. Down in the count now is Braden Althoff. He's facing Carson Stormo. 1-1, one, one, hits the outside corner for my, strike two. And my apologies, I thought the first pitch was a, a ball and I had that registered wrong. So it's 1-2 and two to Carson Stormo. 1-2, stays high, will put Deuces Wild on the board. Two two fired outside a full count. Stormo waiting for the payoff. He is ready to go. Pitch on the way. Gonna be just down though. Carson Stormo gonna take the base on balls. Althoff now up to 72 pitches. 48 of those have been strikes. That's right at the 2 to 1 ratio, 66.67%. Deagle out there, the center fielder hiding amidst the fog. Two down, runner at first base is Carson Stormo, and the batter is Christian Rodriguez. Heavy night air. Foul tip for strike one on Rodriguez. Ball boy Dalton Locke out there to return three foul balls to the umpire. A kid, when I say that Dalton is a coach for Groton, he and Aaron Severson and Seth Erickson do a nice job with their Groton crew. On the flip side, it's Brad Nome and Troy. Oh, that is a shot and going to get over left fielder's head. Rodriguez going to score one off of that. And Stormo going to be driven in by the RBI double by Rodriguez. Anyway, Coach Cruz and uh, Blake Jensen, the three coaches for Lake Norton, have also dedicated their summer, last several summers, to baseball programs in their respective towns. We're going to have a conference on the mound. I think we got Taylor Deagle coming in. It appears that Braden Althoff will give way to him. We'll step away and we'll let him figure it out, and we'll be back in a minute.
correction, that was Corbin Cocker that came in for the mound visit. So Deagle remained in center. There's not going to be a pitching change. Althoff back on, just trying to settle him down, settle the defense down a little bit, regroup. Jackson Wadsworth, the pitcher, or the, the hitter, takes a swing and a miss. Wadsworth, one for four on the night. Struck out swinging, single on a line drive to center. Reached on an error twice in his last two at-bats. So he's been on the last three times, once via the hit and twice via the error. Down in the count now, 0-2. Going to stay back up here with this close-in shot from behind the plate. Ground fog building out there. Not so much in right, not so much in left. Just around Eagle. Popped up. Hoover going to call. Make catch. Hey, Hoover vacuums it up there at third base. And that's going to retire the side. But not before Lake Norton Badger scores another three runs on one hit. There was one error and one man left on base. We'll head into the top of the seventh inning. Do or die time for going. They're trailing by eight. Down 16 to eight. And we'll be back in one minute with the presumed final inning. Welcome back to Dakota Style Field. Top of the seventh getting underway. Last frame of our championship game. Unless Groton can at least put eight runs on the board. Got a laundry list in front of them. And it is one that stretches down a couple pages. This game definitely been an interesting one for a championship game. Got between both teams have 17 total errors up on the board. Score looks like a low scoring defensive football game and a total of nine hits. Groton ready to get underway. Time to put all that behind them and make a run. First pitch down low. Oh, I should say at the knees called strike one. Better is Taylor Deagle. He's 0 for 4 on the night. Second pitch, inside corner, just going to buzz it for strike two. Deagle now looking at an 0-2. 0-2, low and out. One, two, a swing, drop third strike. Rodriguez is going to have to complete, and he will. Deagle had no idea that was dropped. That will be out number one. Strolling to the plate is Ryan Greblinghoff. He's the shortstop, two for two on the night. He's walked a couple times in addition to his two base hits. First pitch on the way, right across the middle of the plate, strike one. One on one now, the count to Grebling Hall. Huh?
One one on the way. Down low in the dirt for ball two. Two one the count. And nice little breaking ball. Going to hit that outside corner. Might have been a little bit more of a slider there. Two and two. Two two pitch. Scrabbling off. Going to reach. Foul it off. Defensive swing to stay alive. Two two, another grounded foul. Two and two remains the count. We're about to do it again. And a reach gonna be a shallow one. Throw to first is just in time. Six, three put out for out number two. Nice play there by Dawson Nome, showing off his athleticism. I mentioned it last night. Nome had relieved in the first game to secure the victory. Came in last night late. Got down to the 28 29 pitch mark, and I said, This is going to determine whether or not he can pitch again tomorrow, and he was not able to. Uh, because he exceeded the limit. Most likely would have, well, I'll put it this way. He would have liked to have thrown more innings in this tournament, but he had to knock down two big victories, save them for Lake Nord Badger, so he's contributing in other ways here tonight. This ball clips Braden Althoff, and with two down, Althoff will be at first base, and Colby Dunker will be the batter. Do or die time here for Groton. That to-do list is a very long one when you got no more outs. Dunker going to take his first pitch. Going to be a wild one down low. Altoff going to advance. Logan Ringenberg would be on deck. Next hitter due up. If Ringenberg, or I'm sorry, if Dunker can extend the inning. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. Carson Stormo trying to hammer things down here for the Lake Norton Badger team in the Junior Legion Championship game in the Class B ranks here in South Dakota. There's a called strike. One and two now to count. And now it appears that the fog has gone away. One, two. Pitches on the way, swing and a miss. That's going to be Dunker going down swinging. And that will retire Groton in the top of the seventh. Final score of this game going to be Lake Norton Badger 16, Groton 8. We've got a few things to take care of here in the post game, but uh, I've got to run some numbers. Let's step away for a couple minutes, and then we'll come back with game totals.
all enjoying the student productions of your school. Tonight's event and every event produced by your school during the school year are created, filmed, and produced by the students you love to follow and support. Become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor. It's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community. As a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. One. Welcome back to uh, Dakota Style Field here at Clark, South Dakota. Championship game is over. Lake Norton Badgers, a Lake Norton Badger, excuse me, able to win the championship 16 to 8 over Groton. Brock, what do you got for stats? I'm going to try to run through this quickly because we've got awards coming up real soon. Dawson Nome scored three runs for Lake Norton Badger. Tyson Stevenson had one hit and three RBIs. George Jensen, one hit, two runs scored, three RBIs. Christian Rodriguez, two hits, one run scored, two RBIs. Jackson Wadsworth, one hit, one run scored, two RBIs. Turner Stevenson had two runs, and I'm going to quiet down, and I'm going to share with you what Dan Sudbeck is sharing. Dan is saying some nice words about the host team, recognizing Chris Wokinski and Matt Clark, among others. A round of applause for the host team from Clark, and I'd like to thank all the people with the Clark Area Baseball Association, baseball and softball. Right now recognizing Groton for their efforts throughout the state tournament. Presenting Dalton Locke with the runner-up plaque. Some heartfelt words. Taking a picture now of the presentation. That's Dan Sudbeck. Making the announcement, John Kirshner Sr., well, actually not senior, sounds like he's about number eight, but uh, John Kirshner presenting the award to Dalton Locke, the head coach. Now recognizing Lake Norton Badger for being the 2022 Junior Legion Class B State Champion, and the boys will all come in and accept their plaque. The coaches, very classy and standing off to the side. They put the pieces together, and the boys made it happen. And now we're going to have the presentation of the individual medals, and I'm going to continue on. I can't remember if I had said that Turner Stevenson had scored two runs in the uh, championship game. Riker Warrington scored one, had an RBI. Ryland Thuey, one hit, three runs scored, two RBIs. 
On the flip side for Groton, Taylor Deagle had a uh, uh, run scored. Ryan Greblinghoff, two hits, two runs scored, one RBI. Braden Althoff, one hit, two RBIs. Colby Dunker, one run scored. Corbin Tucker, one run scored. Dylan Ablin, two runs scored. Brevin Fleece, one run scored. And I'll have a few more stats after the presentation. Father and son hugging each other there. Coach Jeff Cruz. Jeff Cruz. I mentioned one of the coaches. Coach Blake Jensen. And Blake Jensen also had a son on the team. And Coach Scott Warrington. Oh, and I, meant, I failed to mention Coach Scott Warrington. He wasn't in uniform tonight or yesterday. You know, I actually misspoke earlier. I said Troy Cruz. I know Jeff. I know him well. And now the Sportsmanship Award. Umpires made the decision. Hey, and Clark Willow Lake. Is being honored as the winner of the Sportsmanship Award. Chris Bokinski down there on the field asking the boys to come on in. There are a few of our team members still around. Clark Willow Lake and the Clark area teams have won three in the last two years. That's a real honor. Congratulations to our boys. I'd like to thank uh, thank them for conducting themselves as gentlemen. The Big Stick Award up next is based on number of plate appearances they said you have to have eight official at bats and there will be multiple award winners there are three every one of them hit 600 Ryan Greblinghoff in his last at bat was retired. Otherwise, he would have walked away with that by himself. But Landon Calhoun, Nolan Walfelt from Belfouche, and Ryan Greblinghoff from Groton. So it was Calhoun from Winter Cologne, Walfelt from Belfouche, and Greblinghoff from Groton. They're all going to get a bat engraved with their name. And they'll all get a plaque. And it was just mentioned that the Umpires Association pays for that award. And this year they're going to have to spring for two extra plaques and two extra bats. But congratulations to those three gentlemen. Right, 
Grebling Hoff going to have to cinch himself up. He had his jersey unbuttoned, and they're going to take a picture, so they want him to look a little more game ready. Not making him tuck in. <laughs> Congratulations to Ryan and those other two gentlemen. The other two obviously long, have long since gone down the road. And the tournament MVP going to be from Lake Norton. The winner batted 400, had five RBIs, scored three times, two doubles. Struck out 14 in five innings of work in their victory yesterday, and that is Christian Rodriguez. Caught the two games that he didn't pitch, did a lot of little things right, and did a lot of big things right. He's being recognized as the tournament MVP. Congratulations to him. It could have gone to a number of those young men, but Christian Rodriguez is going to take home the hardware. And now they're going to ask the teams to sign baseballs for the um, American Legion that they'll put on display. And um, they're going to allow moms and dads to come out and take pictures of and with their kids. There were a lot of bases on balls, and Dawson Nome was on base twice, Carson Stormo three times, Turner Stevenson twice, Christian Rodriguez once, and Riker Warrington once for Lake Norton via the base on balls. George Jensen was also hit by a pitch on the other side of the coin. Ryan, Ryan Greblinghoff walked twice. Braden Althoff once. Logan Ringenberg and Caleb Hoover each were on base once via the base on balls. And Dylan Ablin and Brevin Fleece on base three times via the base on balls. This game was not what we expected on paper. It became a, more of a shootout, but a high-scoring affair marred with a number of errors but in the end it's Lake Norton Badger taking home the the hardware on the mound Ryan Greblinghoff worked one and two-thirds innings in or to start the game and, get, and struck out three didn't give up any earned runs there were no earned runs given up by the Groton pitchers with 16 on the board so it was the defense that uh, allowed those runs to score Greblinghoff threw 62 pitches, 30 of which were strikes. Braden Althoff worked four and a third innings in relief, struck out three over the course of his innings, and threw 77 pitches, 53 of which were strikes, so right around that two-to-one ratio. Carson Stormo gets the win in relief. Tyson Stevenson, actually I misspoke because of the because of the seven-inning game, Tyson Stevenson would get the win. He went four and two-thirds. I've got my mind on amateur baseball also. In a nine-inning game, you have to go five innings in order to qualify for the win. Tyson Stevenson will earn the win as he started the game, gave up three hits over the course of four and two-thirds innings. He did walk eight, struck out four, gave up two earned runs. But the rest of the runs that he gave up were unearned. Carson Stormo, in relief, two and a third innings pitched. Three strikeouts and three bases on balls. Stevenson, 107 pitches, 55 strikes. Stormo, 59 pitches, 31 strikes. And that's after starting out with 11 or 10 of the first 11 pitches being balls. So he did, did a nice job of settling in and throwing a lot of strikes as the game went on. Uh, Braden Althoff, incidentally, also was hit by a pitch. Stolen bases, Taylor Deagle had two. Brevin Fleece had one, and Dylan Ablin had one. On the Lake Norton side, Dawson Nome had one, and Carson Stormo had one. Sacrifice flies for Tyson Stevenson and Christian Rodriguez. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much going to do it. It has been an absolute joy and pleasure to be bringing you Junior Legion State Tournament action from Clark, South Dakota. We want to thank the Legion for awarding us this honor, privilege, and um, I can't say enough about everybody who's come together and made this a very nice production here in Clark. Also, thank you to LiveTicket.tv for being here, 605 Sports, etc., for all of their efforts to bring you coverage, live coverage, with only a, a hiccup or two along the way. Um, thank you to the sponsors. Thank you to those of you who have joined in and watched, and those of you who will watch on uh, the various... Uh, do you post everything to YouTube? and and uh, on the website itself wherever you are we do appreciate it we're happy to have brought you this it's bittersweet to say that baseball is winding down for the summer i'm heading back to mitchell tonight we do have a long way to go but only a few short days really uh, there's a uh, american legion all-star game in parkston in the mor uh, in the afternoon tomorrow i'll be there and then i'll be back in mitchell for Second round action tomorrow night coming from Cadwell Park. I do want to I do want to give you an update on that just really quickly. As long as I've still got the mic up and running. I looked a little bit ago and it was knotted at two. It's still knotted at two. So in earlier games today, Flandreau prevailed over the Menno Mad Frogs seven to two. Castlewood fell to Kimball, White Lake. Uh, the Nationals beating the Monarchs seven to two. Gerritsen 10 run Madison 11 to 1, and Millbank and Mount Vernon are tied right now in the eighth inning. I'm looking, it's the bottom of the eighth. Mount Vernon is batting. They don't have anybody on, one down, and uh, they're 2 to 2 versus the Millbank Fire Chiefs. And Dominic Berger has gone the distance so far for. For uh, Milbank, he's tallied 16 strikeouts in seven and one-thirds innings. So that's 22 outs, 16 recorded via strikeout. And Luke Tiesler has gone eight so far, scattered four hits, two runs, and has struck out four and walked four. So it's a real battle down there. And uh, be anxious to see how that one turns out because Milbank is one of our area teams and they've got a pretty solid ball program with a really, really good pitcher. But ladies and gentlemen, for Nathan Umberger, everybody else associated with LiveTicket.tv, I'm going to turn it over. Nathan, are you still live? He's not. He's going to turn... He's going to allow me to have the last word. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much. We're so gracious and grateful for you. Um and your support of baseball at all levels here in South Dakota. And this is Brock Greenfield. I'm signing off for now, and I'll hope to see you down the road.